We have heard about how data can be represented with binary formats and how we can do calculations and things like that. But now we want to produce a hardware or an electrical circuit which processes this data or which forces actions if I, for example, push such a button. And how this action can be converted to a logical behavior inside of such a controlling system. So welcome to the lesson about logical circuits. Welcome to lesson number three about logic gates and digital circuits. Today we want to talk about a mechanism to convert the knowledge what we have to represent numbers into an electronic or electric or mechanical calculation machine. So the ways to first of all find an implementation for this calculation equipment then we have to define a set of rules which are used for this calculation. Then we want to go to higher level uh, combinations of these mechanisms. And I want to show you a little bit of practical use in case of FPGAs and VHDL. What did we learn until now? We learned that numbers or information text can be represented with binary signals. Signals are nothing more than switching something on or off. So this is the simplest memory I have. On or off. So this is the simplest representation of information. On or off. So number zero or number one. And I have a very simple mechanism to switch this on. So this is a very simple representation of a gate. I have an input coming from the power and I have an output going to the light. And I can switch on and off this light so that I control with an internal logic, the internal logic is my finger and my brain deciding that I want to switch it on now. I control the flow from the output to the input. So if I would have more than one input, I would be able to control with several of these switches how the output will react on that. And therefore, the simplest version to control these things are gates which combine several inputs to one output according to an implementation of a logic and in the way that they combine the inputs to get the output. And therefore we have to look at it. You already remember maybe the truth table or the table with all possibilities if we have a special set of binary numbers or binary bits. So you should remember this one which is directly behind me here. So this one is the representation you saw in lesson one to represent the different numbers. So what we just do is each of this column here is one of these LEDs. And if we switch it on, we store the information there. If we switch it off, 
we delete the information there. And therefore, these tables represent all possibilities. So let's go to the table number one, which has one input and one output. It's exactly this situation. So you have one input and one output, and if you switch it on, it's directly the output. So if you send in zero, you will get zero. If you send in one, you will get one. And therefore, you can create different other gates. So for example, that you have two inputs. If you have two inputs, you can create four different output situations. So for example, uh, in this case, if you send in zero, you get zero out. If you send in one, you get one out. If you send in one, you get one out and so on. So you have four different possibilities. If you have three different inputs, then you can create eight different possibilities. And if you have uh, four different inputs, you can create 16 different outputs. So the definition is you have inputs, you combine them logically and you get an output. And you define this combination. So what happens inside of such a gate, you define this with such a truth table. So you have all possibilities. You have an individually defined set of outputs. So you can define what should come out of this gate. And then you have a combination, which is a propositional expression um, coming true to legitimate the input uh, values. And the simplest version is the version with an AND combination of switches. If you watch this, you have plus for power and you have ground. And then you connect it via wire to an LED or a lamp. So it's the same situation what we had before, except that we have here now two switches which are in series. So you need both switches switched on so that the light will be turned on. So what this means if you represent this with a table, you have it here. You have input zero, you have input zero, and it results in zero because both switches are switched off. It's this situation here. So if you have one of these both in, uh, inputs one, then it's still switched off because it doesn't matter if you switch this or if you switch this, if not both are switched on, you will not have uh, power on this line. Therefore, only in the last line here, this represents power on. And if you have such a truth table, so if the gate or this uh, rectangle, this symbol uh, for a gate is represented with such a truth table, then you have the situation of a so-called AND. And as this AND is a very important thing here, uh, it's also representing um, with special signs. So you represent it with AND or with, with this roof sign or with a multiplication sign. And it has also a unique symbol for a circuit plan or map so that you can represent it also on such a map. And if you watch this, they are shown here. There are two very important possibilities. The first one is the so-called rectangular shape. The rectangular shape is mainly used in Europe or uh, Germany for the German industry norm. Um, but you will find also this disjunctive norm with this, sh with this shaped form here. You always have two inputs and one output, and the gate representation is this table here, okay? So behind me, I will switch me off. Behind me is the representation with these gates so that you have two inputs, you have the gate and you have one output. And uh, we can directly show it with Logisim. Logisim is an open source tool to design such uh, circuit maps or plans. And therefore, you can play with this uh, for your own and create your own uh, circuits with that. And I want to directly show you the AND in this nice tool. The program has a big plane here where you can do your construction. So it's a canvas and you have some symbols. The basic symbols are the AND, the OR and the NOT here. 
So uh, we already have heard about the end, so you can uh, drag and drop this end to your canvas. And then uh, you see that the end has five inputs, so you can change it to two so that we get the situation which we discussed before. And then you can create input values, so these are the inputs, and you can connect the different lines to the gate. So what you have now is the situation of inputs and outputs. So this is the input symbol, this is the output symbol, and now you can change it. So if you point to this finger symbol here, then you can change the input scenario. So for example, if we have both off, then the output is off. If we have one or the other on, then the output is off. Only if both are switched on, you see the output is on. So this is the AND symbol and this is the AND situation. So all of the four possibilities of OFF, ON, ON or both ON. These are the four different possibilities. So if we go back you will see that we now simulated all of these four possibilities and we have the first very essential and simple gate scenario. The simplest one of course is just the switch as shown with the lamp. But uh, we have here now a combination of two inputs and of course you can now extend it to three inputs, to four inputs, to five, to six, to ten and whatever. So, if you think about what is else possible as combination of switches and output uh, LEDs, you can come to the conclusion that a parallel scenario is also possible. So, we have the same situation here. You have power, the plus, you have ground, you have the LED or the lamp here, and then you have two switches here. So, you can switch on either the uh, one or the other, and what happens if one of both is switched on, or if both are switched on, then you will have light here. So this is called the OR scenario. The OR scenario is shown in form of this table here. This table is 0 and 0 means, or 0 or 0 means 0, 0 or 1 means 1, 1 or 0 means 1, and 1 or 1 is 1. So you have the situation in this table directly represents this situation in this circuit. And as uh, the OR is also a very essential gate, you have also a very elementary symbol for that. So again, the rectangular shape and the disjunctive shape, uh, we have two inputs. The part here is represented with this table here and therefore you have everything available and I directly want to show it again in Logisim. So we take the OR, we again switch to two inputs and now we connect the input So that you see the difference here to the output of the OR. So and if I now switch, then you will see that if one or the other is on or both are on, you have the OR on. Only if both are off, then the OR output is off. So these are the first two gates which we saw and which are the elementary gates for all of the other circuits. So there is still one missing and I can directly show it to you um, here in the, in the next slide. So if we go to this then you'll see what is missing. It's something what is called an OR. For example if you have the LED on then you need the switch off and if you have the LED off you need the switch on. So it's made with this in inductive um, circuit here. So if you switch this, then you have power here, but the switch here will be off. And if you have 
power off here then the switch here will be on and the LED or the light will be on so the table which represents this is shown here and the symbols in rectangular and disjunctive uh, shape is shown here so again I will present this in the logism We can create the knot and now I just connect this one and you will see if I switch this on it will toggle. So you see if you watch just on, on this each time I switch I will get the opposite at the output. So these are the three most important gates because all of these three gates are used to create all of the others. So your complete computer, your complete calculation machine in your computer, everything what you have is based on these three elements. And if you think about that you can do this rendering of the video, all of this stuff just with these three elements. It's fantastic. Having this knowledge, it's now possible to create our own gates as a combination of these three different um, elementary gates. So let's do this. And we automatically also create a mathematical set of rules um, in, in, in case of an algebra. So this is called the Boolean algebra. What do we do? We take one table, so in this case with two inputs, and then we just define our output. So we have input 1 and input 2, in this case called B and A, and then we get the output. And we can now define our output as we want. So it's up to you what we do here. Do you remember? We had the AND, which is 0, 0, 0, 1. We had the OR, 0, 1, 1, 1. And we had the NOT, where always the opposite was defined. And here we have now a completely new output. So we want a 1 if both are 0. We want a 1 if the A is 1. And we want a 1 if both are 1. So it's a completely new combination and completely new logic combination between these inputs and this output. So we defined it. And now we have to find a way to combine this to a gate on the basis, of course, of these elementary gates and or and not. So what do we do? We select all lines where we have the output one. So this is this line, this line, and this line and then we take care on which inputs participate in which way so we make a combination and this combination um, says that if we have both zero so if this is not and this is not so if both are not then we have a one so we take only the ones on the output and we take the inputs and say B not and A not. Then we have a one. Then we take the second one, which is B not and A. So A is now not negated. Then we have a one. So this negation is always a not sign. So and therefore we have the last one B and a and then we have a one so we have now three descriptions here which represent our truth table and the next step is that we just combine these things so we can represent these single elements with an own gate so it shows like this you have the and both inputs are negated so you have a knot in each input line and then you get the output. So these elements can be represented like this. And what we else just do is we combine now all of these different scenarios 
with or. So that we combine the terms with or, and each individual term contains the and and the not. So everything is based on and, or, and not, and we have a new combination, which is called the disjunctive normal form of this truth table, so that these output is represented with B not and A not in combination with OR of B not and A in combination with OR of B and A. And if you do this, you will get a um, new form of gate combination, which is a new circuit and which does exactly what you defined. We can simulate this again with Logisim, therefore I change to Logisim again. I already painted this, so if you remember, both inputs are zero, so the output is one. If B is one, the output is zero. If A is one, the output is one. And if both are on, then the output is on. I also painted the additional state, which we did not take in, in, in account, so that uh, this additional state is not used here. And with this, we have now a mathematic combination. So our operators are the AND, OR, and NOT symbols. So these are the operators of our mathematical background in this algebra. And therefore we can create the Boolean algebra. The Boolean algebra is a set supplied with two elements, 0 and 1 and at least one binary operation and and not or or and not. So you don't need all three. It would also work with and and not or or and not. So you would just need the not and one of the others. You will see later, but it's of course better if you have all three because then it reduces the number of operations. So with this and or and not, you have arithmetic operations, which you can um, use for operation with the elements 0 and 1. And this is that the elements A, B, C of this set based on 0 and 1 follow the following axioms. And the axioms you already know from your mathematical, mathematical background. For example, the associati associativity law is true, the commutativity law is true, the absorption the distributivity and so on. So let's have a look into the distributivity here. Um, you have A and B or C in parentheses, and then it's something like multiplying in what you know from normal math. So A and B or A and C. The difference now is that in normal math you have a higher prioritized multiplication, but here all of the operators have the same rank. So therefore you can also do the same with an OR here. So if you have A or B and C, then you can multiply in the A here. So A or B and A or C. So that the distributivity works here in, in both cases. And all of the other laws should be quite clear. You, you already know it or you already are familiar with it. So for example things like that, if you do a double negation, that one negation um, eliminates the other negation so that it results in an unnegated output. Or if you have a not one, so if it is not on then it's off, so you have not one is zero. If you have not zero it's one, so this complete uh, complement so that 0 and 1 are complements. Or if you have A and 0, so that you always will have a 0, the AND is only true if you have both 1. So it can never happen that the A participates in a way that it will be 1. So A and 0 is always 0. The same is A or 1. If you have A or 1, 
A will not participate because the OR will always be true if one of both is 1. So therefore the result will be 1 and things like that. Or if you have A and A that you result in A or A or A that you result in A. So it's always what you should know from your normal work with the normal algebra. But we can use this knowledge to um, simplify our gates and also to play a little bit uh, with these terms so that you see that it is possible to represent everything with AND and NOT or with OR and NOT. And to do this we can use the De Morgan's law. The De Morgan's law tells us that B and A completely negated is B negated or A negated. And with this we can prove or show that we don't need the AND. We would uh, be able to do the same with OR and a negation or negation uh, gates. So therefore if we have B and A this is all possibilities which we have in the logism uh, sketch. So we have 0, 0 is 0, 1, 0 is 0, 0, 1 is 0 and 1, 1 is 1. So only if both are on it's 1. And if we do the following, do you remember? Double negated cancels out. So we can do a double negation, we'll have the same. So B and A completely double negated. And then we use the De Morgan's law so that we result in B negated and A negated and the whole negated. And this is exactly the same like this. So we can replace an AND if we have three NOTs and one OR. And we do this in logism. So you see here we have the NOTs here. So we always negate the input. B is negated and A is negated. And we just combine it with OR. So if we have 0, 0, we, we will result in 0. The output, of course, is always also completely negated. So if we have both 0, we will result in 0. If we have one of the inputs to 1, we will result in 0. And only if both are on, then the output will be on. So this means at least all circuits can be created with OR and NOT or with AND and NOT. So these two operators or gates would be enough. The next thing is that we can use this knowledge to simplify or reduce the number of operations. So to simplify the logic gates we just follow the rules of the Boolean algebra. You see the rules here again and then we can just apply it to our already known equation. So do you remember our uh, truth table? The result was this uh, disjunctive normal form and then we can do the following. So if we compare these two we see that the AND A is here in both. So what we, what we know as multiply out or factor out um, is here this distributivity law. So we take the A out which means B not or B in the parenthesis and A. And then if you watch this B not or B, B not or B is the complement, so it's something like this, it will result in 1. And if we take 1 and A, it will always be A. It's the boundedness. So at least we came from these terms to this setup. So B not and A. A not or A. So if we watch this we can multiply in. So which means we have A or B not and A or A not. And this helps us to simplify again because A or A not will always result in 1. And if we have this term and 1 we always just have this term. So at least we reduce from here to here. The difficulty is to do at the right position, at the right step, the right thing. So sometimes we have to multiply in 
I always they multiply so we have to use the distributivity in one direction and on the other hand we have to do it in the other direction so that um, we, we have these different scenarios um, we have to use the complements in the right way so that uh, it, it's, it's useful or that we get these complements so that we can uh, reduce it to one and things like that so that we, we have to do on the right step the right thing and this is the difficulty here but you see we reduced it now from one two three four five six seven eight operations to one two operations so the number of required operators or required gates and therefore of required hardware is tremendously reduced here but while keeping the same operation so and this is a quite interesting thing to reduce the size of hardware or to re reduce also the uh, costs for hardware. Uh, this is one step and as I said the difficulty is to do the right thing on the right step and therefore there are some algorithms um, to come to an absolute minimum. You will always, if you do this, you will always come to some minima but at least you want to come to the absolute minimum to the least minimum number of necessary gates and therefore maybe you can use additional algorithms the Quine uh, McCluskey algorithm for example but we won't take care on this we'll use another uh, algorithm I just want to show you that it's really the same so I don't do it in Logisim uh, here I just want to compare it here so this is the starting setup which you already know and then you have the resulting setup and it's exactly the same so both are zero both are there zero and the output will be one if b is one the output will be zero if a is one the output will be one and if both are one the output will be one so this means we reduced it to a minimum number of gates as I said that the use of the different rules in this algebraic um, setup is always not so clear um, that you get to the minimum to the absolute minimum I want to show you a graphical solution which works up to four inputs And I talk about the Karnovic diagrams or KV diagrams. And the idea is that you represent your truth table just in another graphical form and that you can use this to simplify the things in a graphical way. So if you watch this, here are four possibilities and all four possibilities are also here represented. So the first line is A and B naught. This is here. The next line is B naught and A, which is here. The next line is B and A naught, which is here. And the last line here is A and B, which is here. So you have all possibilities again, just in another graphical uh, arrangement. And what you do now is you search for blocks and as you're in the binary system, you can search blocks with one, with two, with four, with eight, with 16, with 32 and so on elements. So in this case, we can find blocks with two elements and we always search for the block with the largest number of elements in this one, two, four, eight, 16 and so on style. So in, in this way we have blocks where each block contains two elements and we always select those one with the largest number of elements. So in this case we do not select single blocks with one element, we can combine them. The blocks can also overlap. So in this case we have the one here in this and in this. So and what do we do now? We search these two blocks and mark them and then the block represents the following equation 
so a and b or a and b not and what happens if we run all of these rules we'll see that we can multiply out a so we have a and b or b not and this means b or b not is one so it means a and one so that would result in one uh, in a and the same is here so uh, we result if we do the boolean algebra we, we will result in b not and therefore it's quite simple to do this application of the boolean algebra because we just write down which elements participate to this block so in this block we have the a we have the b and we have the b not so all of these elements participate a b b not so if we have this and we do the same here in this block a a not b not then we can just cancel elements which appear in negated and in non-negated form so we delete all of the elements which are in negated and in non-negated form and then we combine them with an or so a or b not is the simplified version of our original um, setup so again these equation can be simplified if we create this truth table and then if we produce such a kind of edge diagram searching the blocks with the largest number of a binary set so 1 2 4 8 16 then we search the block with the largest number we check which elements or which inputs participate so in this case we have the b naught and we have the a and the a naught and then we just cancel out elements which are negated and not negated and with this we simply get the solution without any calculation so it's a graphical solution and we always will find the absolute minimum for this equation so again the cook recipe you do this group 16 8 4 2 1 start always with the largest group write down all contributing inputs delete those who are negated and non-negated and then um, combine them with or what you also should know is that the edges here are connected so this edge is connected to here so it does not matter if you make a block like this over the edge or if you combine it here and this is quite helpful if you have larger setups so that you can combine the blocks over the edges and you reduce the number of necessary operations so you can do this for two inputs for three inputs and for four inputs um, otherwise you would need a more dimensional field and then it's not so easy anymore for humans to understand it so let, let's have a look the kind of white with three inputs looks like this so you have the different scenarios you have a not a a not and b b not c c not so in this combination it's quite simple to to draw it in this way and then you fill all of the elements which you define or which you find in the truth table and the same for all inputs with four elements so a b c d so that you have all possibilities and you see here always search the largest number of blocks uh, or the largest uh, or the block with the largest number of elements so like here with 18 and then the next one here with four so here you see the going over the edge part here so that you can combine these two elements with these two elements to tremendously reduce the number of necessary operations um, and then in the, in the internet you will find another representation of these kind of edge diagrams um, this is more the European or German style and this is more the American style so um, it's again all possibilities are represented here the only thing is that you always write down here both um, inputs in combinations so a b c d and you represent 
it not with a naught, b naught, you just write 0, 0, 0, 1. But important here is the following. Important is that if you compare this, for example here, it's not the sequence which you find in the truth table. So in the truth table, you would have 0, 1, 0, 1 in the, in the first bit and 0, 0, 1, 1 in the second bit. So most students make it wrong because they write something like this truth table steps in, into here. Remember here that you should always just change one bit because then it would be wrong. So here is 0, 0, then you change one bit. So 0, 1. In this case, to the next step, you also should just change one bit. So you can write 1, 1, and then you change again one bit, 1, 0. So do not change two bits in one step if you leave from one column to another or also from one row to another. So you have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 0. Otherwise, it would be wrong. And this is one of the most seen errors using uh, this, this style of kernel weich diagrams instead of this style of kernel weich diagrams. But it's exactly the same again. You just find the blocks on different positions but always search for the largest number of elements in the block and then you can overlap the blocks and then you create the blocks. You see the blocks appear on different positions in the different kind of white diagrams. It's also up to you if you set A here and B here or if you make B here and A here or if you make C here and B here. So you just need all representations, all possibilities in this diagram and then it should work. What you also can do is you can check if the result of this simplified solution is exactly the same what you had before and therefore you just have to follow the setup. So we already did it with the Logisim uh, simulation but you can also do it here. Create all possibilities. So in, in this case we have here the original table so where we define for example these outputs. And then if we simplify it with this solution, then we should have at the end here the same outputs. So what we do is we just combine the inputs. So again, these are the four inputs here. And then we create the possibilities what we get. So we combine A not and D or C. So we need not A. So what we do is we take these two gaps here, so A and not A. So we take these two columns here and um, the one is the not of the other. So I will show it to you. So you will have the A and this is just the negation of the A. And then we combine A not and D, so we need the D. And A naught and D will be this. So A naught and D. So and means both must be true to get an output which is true. So not true, true, not true, true, not true, true. So this is not A and D or A naught and D. And then we combine this with or. So C or this. So if one of these is true, then we will get an output. So 0, 0, no. 1, 0, yes, 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 no, yes, 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 no, and so on. And if you compare this output and this output, so it's exactly the same. So it means that with these tables and with the calculation in these tables, we can prove that it is really the right output. And with this, we can simplify our tables. For completeness, I want also to mention that there is another uh, normal form which you can use. This is called the conjunctive uh, normal form. This conjunctive normal form does just the opposite what we do in the disjunctive normal form. We do not take the lines with one. We take the line which results in zero. 
And instead of having here the AND combination, we have the OR combination. And instead of having, if you would connect several of these terms of for the lines, uh, instead of having here the OR connection, we would have the AND connection. So we combine these single terms with AND, and in the terms we have the OR. So it's exactly the opposite what we had before, but it's the same equation and therefore we would in this case come directly to the uh, to the result because only one line is uh, use, usable here for uh, result with zero and therefore it's true that our calculation our simplification at the beginning came to this result b not or uh, and uh, sorry b not or a okay so we came to the same result with three different possibilities. Okay, next step is to combine the simple solutions to a processing unit. So what do we need for a processing unit? What do we need for a calculator? We, we need a possibility to calculate. What is calculation? Doing addition. So adding is one essential part. Another thing is we have to remember results. So therefore memory is a very essential part of this. So how can we create now an adder and a memory out of these simple elements like an and, an or, or not? It's possible. We use the same style what we did before. So we create a truth table for the sum and we create a truth table for the carryover. Because we do a calculation of the sum and if we cannot represent the result anymore in the position um, or with a value at the right position, then we have to bring it to the next position, which is a carry over or a carry out. So therefore, a first elementary adder will add two bits. So it's bit of number one and bit of number two. And the number is just consist uh, or the, the number just consists of one bit. So what we do now is that, we create the truth table for the sum. So what does it mean? Zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus one is one. One plus zero is also one. But here we have now the carryover situation. So one plus one is two and two is at the next position, so the result would be one zero as a as a output in binary. So at the position for this bit, we will have the zero. So one plus one is zero, but we will have a carry out. So we won't have this carry over, but we will have it at the last position. So with these two truth tables, we can represent a simple addition of numbers with one each one bit and if we do exactly the same what we did before to create our logic gates or our combination of logic gates we can now convert this truth tables to a circuit which does an addition of two elements with each one bit and the trick is quite simple. You take always the lines where the output is one. We already know that. And then we make A not and B or A and B not. And only here we have the output one. So we combine this. And if you draw this circuit, then this is the sum part. And 0, 1, 1, 0 as output is also called an XOR. So with the XOR, we can do the sum of a one-bit number or of two one-bit numbers. 
The output of the carry out or carry over part is quite simple. We already know this. Do you remember? Exactly. It's the AND. So 0, 0 is 0. Only if both are 1, then you have 1. So we have A and B. And this A and B is exactly the carry out. So this combination is an adder, a simple adder, which adds two bits and sets the sum and the carryover or the carryout element. And this is called a half adder. But what should we do now to get a so-called full adder? So what, what should we do to really add 8 bits? We do exactly the same. So we create two truth tables and with these two truth tables, we can now do the same what we did before. The only thing what we have to remember is that we have to use the carryover of the previous bit. So therefore, each addition consists of three bits. So it means the two bits from the numbers and the carryover from the previous bit. So what should we do? We just create truth tables with three inputs. So we have the A and the B, which are the bits from the normal uh, numbers which we want to add, and we take the carry over. And then we just follow an addition like we know. So 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 1 plus 0 is 1. 0 plus 1 plus 1 is, now we have the situation again that we cannot represent it anymore with our current bit, so therefore the output of the sum is zero, but we will have something like a carryover. You're right. So therefore, um, we will have in the carryover part here um, a new bit or a new element. So therefore, you will see it here. The carryover here is 1, while the sum is 0. So let's, let's do the same for the rest. So 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 0. 1 plus 1 plus 0 is 0 plus carryover. Here also we have a carryover. And 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 1, 1 or 3 in, in, in a decimal representation. So we will have a result in the sum and we will have a result in the carryover. So now we have two truth tables again. One represents the sum and one represents the carryover. And the same style what we have ever did since we learned dealing with gates, we create terms where the sum or the output is one. So this one is one. So C not, A not, B. So this means C not and A not and B or C not A and B not or C and A not and B not or C and A and B. And if you combine all of these, then we will have the sum. And the same we do for the carry out or carry over. So if we create our logic circuit, then this circuit on the right represents exactly these combination of terms calculating the sum and these represents the carryover. So with these two different circuits, we can represent a complete addition where we take the carryover from the previous bit. And this is called a full adder. And in principle, if you check this, you can combine a full adder on the base of two half adders. And um, therefore, you see this combination also here. So the carryover is based on the output here. And two, two half adders combined um, create a full adder. But in principle, it's nothing more than what you know from here. It's a combination of 
elementary gates on the basis of this disjunctive normal form. So the symbol for this full adder is shown here. You have two inputs, A and B, and you have a third input which comes from the previous calculation. And what you get is an output for the carryover and an output for the sum. So this means you can create now an 8-bit adder in the combination that you take a carry in, which is 0 at the first bit. Then you have bit 0 or the first bit. You take a sum and the carry over uh, or carry out is set as input to the next full adder. And here you sum up A1, B1 and C in from the, from the previous sum. And then you get sum 1 and the output. And the output is sent again in the next full adder and so on. And with this you have an 8-bit addition machine. And of course you can represent this 8-bit addition machine again in Logisim. So I would say let's do this. So to simplify the things I um, do it in the following way to show you just an adder with 4 bits. What you see here is exactly the same combination of full adders which you saw in the slides. So we have the bit 1, bit 2, bit 3, bit 4. So this is the least significant bit. Do you remember the lesson about binary? So this is the bit of the lowest position and this is the bit of the highest position, the most significant bit. So it's quite important how this is arranged. Um, and therefore remember the first lesson. So and what we can do now is we just can set a sequence here. For example, we, we set 3 and we want to add 3. So at the output we should get 6. Or if we set 8 plus 3, the output is 11. What we see here is a hex uh, display and therefore you sh should see 11 in hex is 10 is A, 11 is B, okay? So if we add 4, you will see a C, 5, D, 6, E, and 7, F. So 8 plus 7 is F. And we also have a carryover. So if we add too many bits so that we would have to represent the number again with a new bit, then we'll see the carryover or um, an overflow. So this is a combination of adders to create here in this case a 4-bit addition machine. And if you remember, if we can do an addition of 4 bits, we can also do a multiplication. Because a multiplication is nothing more than several additions. And if we can do a multiplication or an addition, then we can also do the subtraction. Why? Because we have the tooth complement. It's the same. We just have another representation of our binary number. The minus range is represented with a tooth complement. And then we can use the addition for the subtraction. And if we can do a subtraction, then we can also do a division. So with this simple setup, we can create the whole set of mathematical operations. And everything is based on switches, on AND or, or not combinations of switches. Is it, is it nice? It's great. But do you remember what is also missing? Memory. And therefore we have to think about how to create a memory. For a memory, 
we have to remember. So we want to remember what we have done before. So we want to remember a previous state. And therefore, remembering means we need feedback from a previous state. And therefore, feedback for a previous state can be done with a feedback loop. So the simplest form of a memory is a so-called SR flip-flop. It's something like a set or reset flip-flop. It's also known as an asynchronous RS latch using OR and NOT. So in this case, we have two inputs and we have two outputs. One output is the non-negated output and the other output is the negated output. In this case, with this set reset flip-flop, we have a situation that one output is not defined because it depends on when the input rises to a higher level of voltage that it sets or resets. So if both are zero, then it's not defined what happens. And therefore we have non-defined state here. But what we can do is we can have the S and the R and one sets the output and the other um, resets the output. And if both are one, the output is kept. So this is the situation of a memory. So we can set the memory, we can reset the memory, and we can keep the knowledge which we got, so the memory state. So let's, let's see the different steps. So both are zero, it's an error, so we have both one because it's undefined. So both can be one or both can be, be, can be zero. So if we do the set, which is here the R, not R, means set, not R, goes in, and then the output is set. If you reset it, not set, so then you get a one at the not output and you reset it in the real output. So this is the set and the reset part. And then if you have one, one, it doesn't matter if you have one or zero here, it always keeps the current state. So it, it keeps the state which you prepared here with the set or the reset um, task. So it means if you have one, one and it was zero, then it keeps zero. If you have one, one and it was one, then it keeps one. But it's not so nice that we have a state here which is undefined. So we should have a situation where we have defined states. And therefore we have go to the JK flip-flop and there are several others. So I just want to uh, show you one sample of this, which is a trick at JK master slave flip-flop. And the trick is that you now have a set and a reset situation, but you just do it if you set a trigger of, or if you have an impulse on a clock signal. And this is very important because all computers have a clock inside because they have to do actions and trigger special memory states according to a given trigger clock. And therefore you remember maybe if you bought a computer uh, the computer has this number of megahertz. So this number of megahertz are the clock pulses. And therefore, as faster as this clock is, as faster this memory reset things work. So therefore, this is our heartbeat for the computer. So setting can only be done if the trigger is also up. So if you get a trigger pulse. I want to show you this principle again with logism. So here you find this flip-flop. Uh, I downloaded it here from Learn About Electronics. And you have this triggered JK flip-flop. So these master slave flip-flops. In, in principle, these are two flip-flops which are um, combined and connected to a trigger. So if you want to set the output, the output will only be set if you have a complete trigger pulse. 
So if you want to reset the output, it's again complete trigger pulled and it resets the output. So let's set again. And if you have no set and no reset signal, then the output will be kept. So you have a stable state. If both are one, then this flip-flop is designed to toggle the output. So it always will switch between up and down. And maybe you can think about where we can use this toggling. For example, if we want to design a counter. So if you want to count from zero up to another number, this is quite helpful if we can arrange a circuit which toggles through all of these elements and toggles through all of the numbers and keeps the state, the previous state, so that it remembers where or which number was already reached. But I think you got the principle how these flip-flops work. Um, you don't have to know it in detail, it should just, you should just remember that what you need for a basic operation, for a basic um, calculation machine is an addition, because with this you can do all of the others, and a memory, because you have to remember what you had before. And therefore, the most design tools, these cut tools, offer already a lot of other logic gates, which are in principle just combinations of these simple gates here. So AND, OR, AND, NOT are the elementary gates, and you can create all of the others here just by combining these simple gates. And that you don't have to do it all the time um, directly from, from the beginning, get all of these things directly in your um, application or in your CAD tool. And therefore it's quite helpful and quite intuitive and it's, it's quite helpful um, if you are used to deal with these CAD tools and therefore you should also do the tutorial. Okay, so now you know the theory. You have nice drawings, you have nice sketches. But how do you get a real hardware? Do you remember? Switch on and switch off. So how do you come from these gates to such a hardware which remembers the state? And therefore, we should show a little bit the history. So this is the first one. So we need a representation of this here, of a switch. And therefore a little bit of the history of the development of such switches. It all started with these valves. So what is it? In principle it's just a switch where you can amplify switch or modify the inputs and outputs. And then transistors were created, so these semiconductors um, are commonly used for this switching equipment. So it was a really huge breakthrough to come from these valves. So for example, to create a computer with these valves, uh, you needed a whole room and changing to these small pieces of semiconducting material, it was a jump to a reducing of size. And it's now the building blocks of all modern computers. The only thing was that they had to reduce the size and therefore uh, a microelectronic part called wafer was created so that you had a lot of micro circuits on a plate um, doing some doping, chemical etching or depositioning um, on uh, different materials so that you had the same like here switches on the basis of this microelectronic element and then 
This was constructed to an integrated circuit so that you had an IC, it's a chip or a microchip uh, based on a, a silicon um, element and um, therefore you had electronic equipment which enabled it to make a lot, a lot, a lot of switches on a very small piece of electronic. So from here to here, it reduced the size of computers and what you carry with you nowadays in your mobile phones passed this way. So original computers filled rooms and nowadays you have the power of this and or and not gates with you in your pocket. So before we close this session, I want to show you also another practical use. Um, so the practical use is that, for example, you have calculation machines and everything. All programs run on this uh, hardware. So uh, the next step will be to create uh, computers or programmable devices with these uh, circuits. But you have everything in your mobile computer. But another practical use is that you can program these hardware devices or special hardware devices um, also nowadays and that you can create dynamical hardware using FPGAs and VHDL. So what are FPGAs? FPGAs are filled programmable gate arrays and they are modern integrated circuits um, to program logic on hardware. So they in principle consists of arrays and these arrays have nothing more than lookup tables. Do you remember lookup tables? I said lookup tables are quite important to change one representation to another representation. So what you do here is you have a lookup table and the lookup table is nothing more than a truth table and the truth table represents the hardware. So Therefore, you have a lookup table with four or six inputs and different memory blocks based on um, external memory or on um, memory based on flip-flops and all implements truth tables and digital circuits. And as you can define this truth table and as you can define the lookup table according the, to the truth table and that you can load onto such a, a hardware a new truth table setup, so a new lookup table setup, you have now a hardware which you can change with a program while it is running. So it means you have a programmable hardware array and you have also other elements available like input output arrays or clock generators or filters and so on. So in principle it is a quite powerful tool and it is often used for matrix multiplications because matrix multiplications would need a lot of um, time in normal processors. So you will hear next week how a processor is created. So what a CPU is and if you do it in the classic way, matrix multiplication costs a lot of uh, loops on this processor. So here, a multiplication is in principle just switching on and off additions. And therefore, large matrix multiplications and therefore uh, fast Fourier transformations, things like that, can be easily done on such programmable hardware. So therefore, you will find a lot of FPGA designing tools like graphical design tools, CAD tools. You already saw one, uh, this logic sim. Also, these FPGA um, design tools uh, are available from different vendors and they are used to implement circuits with graphical elements. And each graphical element can then be simulated. And if you can simulate one single graphical element, which is a representation for a circuit, then you can also do a simulation of the complete set of the circuit. 
So therefore you have a graphical tool where you can do the design and also directly the circuit simulation. And then everything is converted to a language which is called very high speed integrated circuit hardware description language in an acronym VHDL. And this VHDL can be stored and then with this VHDL you can create the layout and the setup of these lookup tables on the hardware. And then you load this hardware lookup table just to the hardware. So you prepare it, you design it, you test it and then you ship it to your hardware. And here is one example of such a simple VHDL code. So such a simple VHDL code um, is based on two inputs and one output. And what it does is described here. So input A1 and input A2 are combined with an AND and will result in the output which is sent to here. So you have two input lines and one output line and what you get is an AND. So if I switch off again you see here the AND and this AND is exactly the end what you know from our um, design in Logisim. So that's it. That's the end of the lesson. I hope you learned a lot about what is inside your computer or your mobile phone and that everything is based on this and or and not gates and that you need an adder, so a mechanism to add different numbers and the memory and all of this is inside of your equipment which you carry with you in your pocket. If you are able to design these things the whole world of electronics is open to you. So therefore our tutorial will also train these things a little bit and I want to say bye bye and stay safe. You too. Okay. Bye bye.